on air, online, on the go. KY3 News at 5 starts now. We are now able to confirm that we have, in fact, discovered a young female body. A young girl snatched off the street near her Springfield home. The man grabbed her and pulled her in the truck and sped off really fast. Hours later, the child's body found inside this home. The accused killer, a longtime teacher's aide with Springfield Schools. It makes me scared for her, you knowing that, that his truck would pass her every morning. People in the Ozarks and all across the country are shocked, sickened, and saddened by the kidnapping and murder of a 10-year-old girl in Springfield. The first call of that kidnapping came in about 24 hours ago, then an all-out search for Haley Owens. We have team coverage tonight from the neighborhood where the kidnapping happened. The suspect's home, the school Haley attended, and the school in North Springfield where suspect Craig Wood worked as a teacher's aide. This heartbreaking story began in Springfield last night near West Bypass and Grand. KY3's Paula Morehouse is there with the latest developments. Paula. Ethan and Emily, this is certainly not the outcome anyone wanted, but we are starting to get some answers to the crime that was committed here on Lombard Street just about exactly 24 hours ago. While she has not been positively identified, we have a high degree of confidence that it is our victim, Haley Owens. It was the ending nobody wanted. 10-year-old Haley Owens' body was found inside the home of the suspected killer. There's no connection we've been able to determine at this time at all between our victim and our suspect. The suspect is 45-year-old Craig Wood. Police say he grabbed Haley while she was walking down Lombard Street shortly before 5 in the evening Tuesday night. By 8.30 p.m., officers arrested Wood, who was driving up to his home on Stanford Street. He refused to talk and, and ask for an attorney once he was at, at headquarters. Officers found Wood's home after talking to several witnesses who even chased after the suspect. They got the license plate number and a description of Wood. Could have been the opposite, that uh, no one had seen anything and we would still be looking and we wouldn't have a clue as to who did this. Officers obtained a warrant to search the suspect's house around 2.25 in the morning. A cursory investigation led them to believe the young girl's body was inside. By 10.50 in the morning, they confirmed the worst. In addition to these two crime scenes, investigators were at a laundromat near National and Elm this morning. The attendant at the laundromat said FBI agents were looking at one particular washer and dryer and removing bags of evidence. It's tragic, it's horrific. And uh, in 30 plus years of law enforcement, I've dealt with a lot of things. Uh, no, I cannot specifically point to a case like this. Back here live on Lombard Street, you are looking at flowers, teddy bears, and cards that people are dropping off in front of the witnesses' house. Two witnesses who, as you heard Chief Williams say, played a key, crucial role in breaking this case. There will be more developments tonight. In fact, within the next hour, the Greene County Prosecutor is holding a news conference about the Haley Owens case. That happens at 545. KY3 will bring you that live. Reporting live in Springfield, Paula Morehouse, KY3 News. Taking a look at this map, this is the neighborhood where Haley was snatched over on the west side, not far from West Bypass in Grand. Last night, police started watching Craig Woods' home. That's over here in a different part of town, the 1500 block of East Stanford, just north of Sunshine between Fremont and Glenstone. And officers were there when he pulled into the driveway last night. KY3's Shayla Patrick joins us live from the crime scene with the latest. Shayla. Well, Emily, I'm here in the 1500 block of East Stanford outside of Woods home and you can see the crime scene has been taken down, but the neighborhood is very much still in shock after learning less than 24 hours ago that their neighbor Craig Wood was arrested for murder in connection with the abduction of Haley Owen. Again, police have confirmed a body was found at this home where Wood was arrested and they believe the body was Haley's. I've been here in this neighborhood all day as police detectives and FBI agents have been in and out of Woods home processing the crime scene. As officials worked, neighbors gathered on their front lawns to look on and to comfort each other. Neighbors I spoke with described the area as a quiet street with older homes, some rentals and lots of kids. I was pretty shocked, very saddened and it's one of those things you never expect. You know it goes on in the world but you just don't expect it to be anyone that you've ever seen or met. It's just heartbreaking and I just, you know, it's it's here in the neighborhood and you, you'd want to come out and just make sure that you're safe. 
you know, and it's just been a good opportunity to discuss with my daughter and reiterate all of the points that we've always taught her about talking with strangers. I believe that that man has sealed his fate. He'll, he'll get what is coming to him in the end. People that do things to children reserve a special place for themselves, I feel. Many neighbors I spoke with, including some who've lived here in this neighborhood for many years, say that they've never actually talked to Wood. Some have seen him come and go, but a lot of them have never actually had interactions with him. They say for the most part, he kept for him to himself. Now, I'll have much more on how this neighborhood is coping and reacting tonight at 6. Reporting live in Springfield, Shayla Patrick, KY3 News. 10-year-old Haley attended Westport Elementary School and, uh, of course, students there having a difficult time processing how such an evil thing could happen to their classmate, their friend. Jahan Sheikh talked with the principal about how the school is helping students cope tonight. Jahan. Ethan, the principal, along with everyone here at Westport Elementary, mourning the death of 10-year-old Haley Owens. She was just a fourth grader here. The principal sent out this letter to parents, letting them know that extra support will be on hand for the next several days. I talked with a mom earlier today who went to go check on her kids. She said everyone inside the school still shocked. The students hard to grasp what happened to their classmates. School staff tell us that Haley was a well-liked, happy-go-lucky girl involved in extracurricular activities. It's definitely a, a sad day here at Westport, a sad day for Springfield. The principal says they will be here for the students this heartbreaking time. Parents send their kids to us. It's their most precious gift. And our obligation as educators is to take care of those kids and do what's best for them. And, you know, Again, that's, that's, our, that's what we're called to do. And wavering from that is, is an injustice. So again, that's what we have to do is take care of the kids. And that was our role today. What are we gonna have to do? Lock them in the house 24 seven? Kids can't even go outside and play. When I was a kid, I used to go outside and play in the whole neighborhood. You can't do that no more. We're told that the students worked on special art projects for the Owens family. There will be a vigil for Haley on Saturday night. It's planned to be uh, on 8 o'clock on C Street to honor the life of Haley Owens. All right, Jahan for us tonight. Now, shockingly, the suspect in this case was a longtime employee with Springfield Public Schools. Craig Wood started working with the district back in the late 90s and was working as a teacher's aide at Pleasant View School. KY3's Linda Russell joins us from there with more on his record. Linda. Craig Wood has actually been employed with Springfield Public Schools for about 15 years. His employment here at Pleasant View is now suspended. Now, he began working with the district in August of 1998 and was a temporary employee, including working as a substitute teacher. Now, Wood became a full-time employee in 2006. We're told he has worked as a teacher's aide and a coach here. It's not clear how long he's been at Pleasant View Elementary and Middle School. Today, the school sent an alert now message to families informing them about the situation. They had extra counselors on hand today as well as a police presence at the school as it is an ongoing investigation. The district sent out information about their background check process today, telling us the district goes above and beyond state mandated checks with local, state and national authorities. They also check with a family care safety registry, which collects information from more than a dozen agencies to find whether a potential employee may be unsuitable for work with children. Now, parents, of course, are terrified to learn that an alleged killer was working with their children every day. I'm always warning my son about when we go right into town, you know, you know, you need to watch this, stay beside me, don't wander off, you know, mm -hmm. stay right here. You never know what kind of weirdos are out there. Mm -hmm. And then for this to happen right here at his own school, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm, I just can't believe it. Now, we are told um, as far as a criminal history that Craig Wood only had a misdemeanor drug charge on his record um, about 20 years ago. Uh, we're told he was a Marshfield um, graduate. Um, that classmates who contacted us told us he was voted most outspoken and class clown. He was also in the bluegrass band Uncle Fudd. Back to you. All right, Linda Russell tonight. The kidnapping happened in broad daylight in front of witnesses. And it was those witnesses that were crucial to the police and the FBI investigation. Let's go back out to the scene now of the abduction. 
West Lombard Street in Springfield and Ashley Reynolds, who spoke with a man who chased the kidnapper in his pickup truck. It's simply a tragic story of a good Samaritan trying to do the right thing, but it just didn't work out. Ricky Riggins says he saw Haley Owens playing near his front yard. He heard the scuffle. Another neighbor, he says, yelled at Wood, don't touch her. Wood then reportedly sped off with Haley Owens. Riggins quickly followed in his car. He says he chased Wood a few blocks down Kansas near Grand, but because of the 5 o'clock traffic, he simply lost him. Riggins says he feels guilty and believes he was so close to saving this little girl. I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, I tried I tried my hardest to try to keep up with the guy to find out what he was doing, but I wasn't able to. And I was just trying to do what I thought was right. Um, and, you know, I was hoping I have a niece and nephew, and if anything ever happened like that, I'd hope somebody would do the same thing, you know? And we should mention several neighbors played a role in this as he was chasing wood. Apparently a neighbor also took down his license plate and another neighbor called 911. We're live in Springfield, Ashley Reynolds, KY3 News. All right. Thank you, Ashley. When we come back, a check of the weather. Abby tells us when uh, storms could head back to the Ozarks. First, your weather school question tonight. Here it is. We'll have the answer and the forecast up next. Sounds like some big changes on the way in the weather world. Yeah, there certainly are. We had mild temperatures out there today. Mm -hmm. Despite the cloud cover, we still made it into the 60s today. Uh, tonight, we're going to be warm. In fact, some of you may wake up in the 60s tomorrow, uh, cool. but don't let it fool you. You need to bring the jacket with you tomorrow. A strong cold front comes through. By the time you leave work, you'll want it. Trust okay. me. Yeah, okay. the winds are going to pick up and the temperatures are really going to fall. We'll spend most of the day in the 40s. So, oh, wow. yeah, some big changes. And there's already some rain on the radar. I'll show you Storm Tracker 3 right now. Most of it up toward Kansas City. That's where we have a thunderstorm. There's been some lightning detected in this. Here in the Ozarks, we've just had some light sprinkles, but the storm system not going for us yet. Uh, the low pressure system and the warm front still going to continue to bring some rain showers to us overnight tonight. Where we do have a thunderstorm, they're getting a nice little uh, rain shaft moving through. We're going to continue to see heavy rain in some parts. A white oak getting ready to uh, see some of the heavier rain right now in the Ozarks. Well, just to the east of Hartville, we have some very light sprinkles, light rain just south of Mountain Grove and heading south into Douglas County. For the most part, though, we have been dry all day. We're going to see these showers pick up overnight tonight. And I did mention a slight risk for some stronger storms. That's going to be out in our north and west counties. This is a slight risk for severe weather. And the main concern here is hail with some of these thunderstorms. Not a tornado risk with this, but some of the storms could produce some hail up to an inch in diameter in many places. Here's satellite and radar, a loop, and notice that this is just now getting going. Some showers developed out in eastern Kansas, rolled up to the northeast. So the direction right now, generally north and east, that's going to hold true throughout the overnight hours tonight. We've had the clouds in place all day, but it's overnight tonight when that warm front lifts through, we start to increase the dew points, and we really see that low-level moisture increase as we head into tomorrow morning. This is good news because we need the rain. Here comes the low pressure. This this is tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the morning. Notice that the warm front lifting through. Our temperatures are actually going to be going up as we head throughout the overnight hours tonight. Low pressure moves almost directly overhead just to the northwest of Springfield tomorrow morning. This is 9 o'clock in the morning and a cold front will follow that low pressure system. Windy conditions come along with this system as well, so we will see winds really pick up. They'll be strong out of the south tomorrow morning when you wake up. And then tomorrow afternoon behind the cold front, I think they're going to be strong out of the northwest. So an incredibly windy day all across the board. We do have a few more clouds rolling in for Friday, but the conditions look much better by then. Stockton Lake shows a lot of cloud cover. There's a storm north of that area. It's 58 degrees in Springfield right now and dew points still only 25. So we'll see that increase big time later on when the warm front lifts through. Current temperature is still in the 60s in many locations. It's 59 right now in West Plains, 61 in Mountain Home and 55 degrees the current temperature in Camdenton overnight tonight. These temperatures, they're not going to move much. Notice throughout the overnight hours through 1 a.m., we could only fall a couple of degrees. And as I already mentioned, we're going to hit these low temps about midnight. Warm front lifts through, and we actually see an increase in those temperatures. Storm chances best after dark tonight and early tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow as the front moves through, that's when we'll see some scattered showers and thunderstorms as well. I already mentioned a drastically cooler afternoon tomorrow than what we had out there today. Sharply cold.
colder, so remember the coat as you walk out the door tomorrow morning. You're going to want it. This is 3 o'clock in the morning tonight. Notice that temperatures are going to continue to increase. In fact, many of you will wake up in the 60s. It's going to feel really muggy when you wake up tomorrow. Cold front, it's a strong one. It's going to drop our temperatures and bring kind of a nasty wind with it with gusts over 30 miles an hour possible. A wind advisory uh, could be in place as well and also some wind damage is possible with some of those stronger storms. 52 tonight in Springfield, 54 in northern Arkansas. Tomorrow afternoon you're looking at high temps in the 60s. Again, this is a bit deceiving because you'll spend most of the day in the 40s. The seven day forecast shows you slightly cooler temperatures as we end the work week and cooler yet as we start next work week. We're going to continue to see temperatures that fall into the 20s by the end of the week. Temperatures uh, tonight are going to be mild. Uh, another look at that weather school question for the day. The chances of you there chances are you tend to stay awake longer when the air pressure is 30 inches of mercury is the magic number for whatever reason you move either direction and it gets worse. You get more tired. A huge day today in the Winter Olympic Games in Sochi. Yes, yeah, Springfield figure skater Gracie Gold taking to the ice today for her short program. And we're going to put the results on the screen after the short program. So look away if you don't want to know yet. That's right. Everything will be in prime time. All the action will be in prime time tonight on KY3. So don't look now if you want to watch in prime time and not know the result ahead of time. If you do want to know the result, look at your screen and you'll see it. All right, we're going to take it away. Come back to the screen now. We have the big watch party tonight for Gracie Gold at Mediacom Ice Park starting at 7, going until 10.30. You can also meet local Olympians there, and we will be there as well. You can skate for just $3. That price does include your skate rental. We'll check on some other news of the day when we come back. Charges tonight in a shooting in North Springfield. Charles Frederick is accused of domestic assault and armed criminal action. A woman was seriously injured during an argument with Frederick. Springfield police say it happened at a home on 8th and Waverly. That's just south of Evangel. Frederick is in the Greene County Jail tonight. An update now on a story we first brought you earlier this week. A yeah, father is now charged in the case of an 11-year-old girl taken near her school in Marionville. You remember this from earlier the week. This man, 45-year-old Andrew Smith, is now charged with child endangerment and interference with custody. Smith's brother, Oliver, is also charged in the case. A probable cause statement from the Aurora Marionville Police Department says the Smith brothers put this girl, Danielle Smith, into a car early Monday morning near her school. Police say her little brother also got into that car. Investigators say Andrew and Oliver, Oliver Smith dropped the boy off at Marionville Elementary, but then drove to Oklahoma with Danielle. Police arrested both Andrew Smith and Oliver Smith in different locations in Oklahoma. When we come back, more on the kidnapping and murder of 10-year-old Haley Owens. An all-out search for 10-year-old Haley Owens ended this morning when police found the child's body inside the home of a Springfield teacher's aide. Police were waiting at his home when he arrived last night. He, he drove up in the truck as officers were uh, watching the residents. Investigators contacted him, had a brief discussion, and uh, he actually agreed to accompany them to headquarters for questioning regarding this potential crime. Uh, my understanding is he refused to talk and, and ask for an attorney once he was at, at headquarters. We're conducting surveillance on, on a couple locations. That was one of them. So it was the license plate that led to him? It was. This man, Craig Wood, is now in jail, and we are expecting charges within the next hour. We have been in contact with Haley's family. They sent us some pictures of the 10-year-old. Haley's aunt tells us she was an outgoing child who had a special gift for cheering people up when they were down. And as you can see here in these photos, she had a big smile. And they say that's what they'll remember most about Haley. And I know, Emily, that you spoke with Haley's father today. I can't imagine what he's going through. He didn't have much to say, as you can imagine, just some very heartfelt words saying how much he loved his little girl and that he misses her. Imagine the heartbreak of a father. Uh, well, a lot of heavy hearts in the Ozarks tonight. Be sure to stay with KY3 on the air and online for continuing coverage of the abduction of Haley Owens. We will have an update for you tonight at 545 when we're expecting more information from county prosecutors. We will bring that to you live and we'll have more on KY3 News at 6. See you then.